As the saying goes, luck is also a skill, and sometimes people who experience it make incredible discoveries. There are those who have been fortunate enough to unearth unique items that would later be described in history textbooks. In this video, we have compiled 20 of the most astonishing and random historical discoveries for you. Enjoy watching. This find might be one of the most important discoveries that facilitated the study of ancient Egyptian civilization. Without the accidental discovery of the Rosetta Stone, we might still be in the dark about hieroglyphs. In 1799, during Napoleon Bonaparte's campaign in Egypt, a group of engineers from the French army stumbled upon the Rosetta Stone. This happened while they were repairing fortifications near a small town, now known as Rashid. The precious stone slab was not a deliberate find, but a random discovery buried in the sands of the desert. Originally, the stone was located in a temple near Sais, a major Egyptian city in the western Nile Delta. It was later moved to Rosetta, where it became part of a fort and remained hidden until its discovery by French Lieutenant Pierre Bouchard. The stone's journey did not end there, and it was taken to Cairo. But in 1801, after the defeat of the French troops in Egypt, the stone became the property of the British and was taken to the British Museum. Local experts recognized the stone as an artifact, and from 1814, attempts began to decipher the inscriptions on its surface. British scholar Thomas Young not only initiated the process, but also achieved considerable success. He managed to understand that the hieroglyphs in the cartouches contain phonetic variants of royal names, also mentioned in ancient Greek inscriptions. The final breakthrough in understanding the text was made by a French linguist, who reported that hieroglyphs are a symbolic graphic writing system, representing a complex combination of phonetic and ideographic signs. This allowed for the understanding of the hieroglyphic code and the use of this knowledge for further study study of Egyptian civilization. As it turned out, the text of the stone is a commemorative inscription written by Egyptian priests for Ptolemy V Epiphanes. A few years ago, traces of a previously unknown henge, a prehistoric structure similar to Stonehenge, were discovered in Ireland. Curious researcher Anthony Murphy was studying the area with a drone when he suddenly noticed a dried-up pond hiding an unusual archaeological monument. The discovery was made possible only due to the heat wave, which led to the growth of grass over the ruins, forming an extraordinary trace visible from a bird's eye view. The remnants of the henge are a circular mark 150 meters in diameter. At first glance, such a find seemed surrealistic, and the operator doubted what he saw. Arriving at the site, he confirmed that it was not an optical illusion, but a real and quite large discovery, at least 5,000 years old. Perhaps this circle encompassed thousands of people and was used for ancient rituals. According to archaeologists, the find is of international significance, as it has a number of features not seen before. It is quite possible that further study will enable experts to uncover many more secrets, influencing our understanding of history. On November 4, 1922, a monumental discovery was made in the field of archaeology that shocked the world and rewrote the history of ancient Egypt. In the Valley of the Kings, Howard Carter, undeterred by skeptics, continued his work and stumbled upon the tomb of Tutankhamun, who reigned around 1332 to 1323 BCE. The tomb, well preserved, almost immediately became one of the most iconic discoveries in archaeology. However, few know that Tutankhamun's tomb was found by happy chance, but Carter and his team were not the first to find it. Further research showed that the pharaoh's tomb had been excavated and looted, as some of the jewels used for royal burials at the time were missing. Whether the jewelry disappeared before the tomb's discovery, or if Howard Carter himself stole some of them, remains unknown. But scientists are making every effort to find them. In 2016, an archaeologist stumbled upon a rare discovery. While scanning the seabed of the Black Sea near the territorial waters of Bulgaria, a team of researchers discovered not one, but a total of 41 shipwrecks. Initially, the experts were conducting studies on water levels after the last glacial period, but the Black Sea revealed its secrets. Due to the lack of oxygen at the seabed, the wooden vessels were well preserved. At a depth of about 150 meters, ships virtually untouched by time were found. 
The research team, equipped with modern remotely operated vehicles with high-resolution cameras, brought the past to life through 3D imaging. At the same time, another underwater vehicle, equipped with geophysical instruments, allowed for a broader area to be covered, where relics from the Ottoman and Byzantine empires were located. Unfortunately, the team decided not to raise the ships to the surface and left them at the bottom of the Black Sea, as it is there that the optimal conditions exist to preserve these wooden ships for decades. Thanks to modern technology, we can explore sunken ships without the risk of damaging their structure or the ecosystem that has formed on the seabed. In the images obtained by the archaeologists, you can see masts, hatches, and engraved decorative woodwork belonging to the Roman and Ottoman eras. The ships have been underwater for more than 2,500 years, but the chemical composition of the seawater has preserved the good condition of the vessels and their wreckage. The minimal amount of light at the bottom of the Black Sea also played an important role, as it does not promote the development and life of marine organisms that could feed on the sunken ships. In Bavaria, during pipeline excavations near the Church of St. George, archaeologists made an incredible discovery. They unearthed a well-preserved skeleton of a man dated between 1450 and 1620. However, it was not the age of the remains that made them unique, but the complex metal prosthesis for the hand consisting of individually crafted fingers. The prosthesis, made of iron, replaced four missing fingers of the left hand. It appears they had been amputated, but the reasons why this happened are still unknown to experts. The artificial limb was attached to the stump with straps, a fact that is far ahead of its time. This is currently one of the earliest prostheses found by archaeologists, confirming the inventiveness of people in the distant past. Medicine at that time was much better than we had assumed. The purpose of the prosthesis and the reasons for the amputation remain unknown. At the same time, traces of fabric and skin found during scanning suggest that the prosthesis was covered with a material similar to gauze, indicating an attempt to increase the comfort of the person who only had a thumb remaining on their hand. The Bavarian State Department reported that archaeologists had previously found about 50 similar prostheses in Central Europe, dating back to the late medieval period. This period in history is famous for various military conflicts, including the Thirty Years' War, which may have caused injury to many people. At that time, limb amputation was a common occurrence, likely leading to an increased demand for prostheses. Thanks to this and other discoveries, scientists can see the development of prosthetics and medicine, both in Germany and throughout Europe. It's unlikely that anyone can boast of discovering an underground city while renovating their home, but a man living in the Derinkuyu district in Turkey did just that. In 1963, during what seemed like a routine renovation, the man discovered a mysterious room hidden behind a wall in his house. Soon, it turned out that this was not just a room, but an extensive network of tunnels, later named Derinkuyu after the village. In Turkish, Derinkuyu means deep well, but essentially an ancient multi-level underground city was hidden behind the wall of the house. By 1965, the city's caves were cleared and opened for tourist visits, becoming the largest cave settlement in Cappadocia. Derinkuyu is a labyrinth and a marvel of volcanic rock, extending to eight levels underground, more than 60 meters deep. Historians estimate that in the distant past, the underground city could have served as a shelter, accommodating up to 20,000 people. It is not just a multi-level tunnel system, but a full-fledged city with ventilation shafts, water sources, Courses, and rooms designed for long-term living. Amazingly, there are stables, a church, and a winery here. The underground city is thousands of years old, and experts believe its construction began between the 8th and 7th centuries BC. Initially, the stone rooms could have served as living and storage spaces, but over time, the city's purpose changed. It became a refuge, a hidden fortress with protective functions, including a massive stone door more than half a meter thick, protecting the inhabitants from attacks and combat encounters with strong enemies. Sometime later, the underground city lost its relevance and people stopped hiding, completely forgetting about the tunnel system. Although the underground city was discovered in 1963, scientists believe that only 15% of the entire territory has been explored to date, suggesting that new and equally amazing discoveries may still await us here.
In 2014, in a modest town in the southwest region of Scotland, not just a valuable object, but a piece of history was discovered. Derek McLennan was exploring the marshes with a metal detector when his device signaled the presence of metal nearby. This led him to an astonishing collection of treasures, known as the Galloway Hoard. The Viking Age find is considered the most valuable and unique, as no one before had found so many ornaments from those times. The artifacts, over a thousand years old, include various materials and treasures from different countries. The collection contains more than a hundred items, including gold, silver, crystal, a wooden Christian cross, and glass beads. How did all these items end up underground? Likely, Vikings lost or hid the looted treasures from Ireland, England, and even Asia. At the same time, some archaeologists speculate that it was a burial site, but no bones confirming this have been found yet. According to Scottish law, the finder receives a reward equivalent to the market value of the hoard. The total value of the finds is about 2 million British pounds, but they cannot be sold into private collections. Understanding this, the kingdom's museums have opened fundraising to buy the artifacts and preserve them forever. Another unusual discovery was made in March 2011. An operator of heavy machinery, working in an oil sands mine, was drilling oil sands when he unexpectedly came across something unusual. Massive brown rocks resembling ribs turned out to be just that. Archaeologists called to the site confirmed that the find was of significant paleontological value. The excavated fossil turned out to be a nodosaur, a member of the herbivorous dinosaurs known as Borealopelta marcmicelli. The unique discovery, found north of Fort McMurray in Alberta, Canada, astonished archaeologists with how well-preserved the dinosaur was, covered in armor. The formidable creature with impressive armored plates on its back could weigh more than a ton. The mummified body, which is 110 million years old, was so well preserved that scientists were able to determine what the nodosaur ate shortly before its death. It turned out that the herbivorous dinosaur was a fan of ferns and avoided coniferous trees. In July 2018, during the construction of a pond at a golf club in Tetney, Lincolnshire, England, workers stumbled upon an unusual burial of a Bronze Age chieftain. The grave, over 4,000 years old, contained a coffin up to 3 meters long and about 1 meter wide, made from the hollowed trunk of a large, fast-growing oak. The burial, located under the waters of the pond, had lain there for several millennia, but the coffin was surprisingly well-preserved, intriguing archaeologists even more. The contents astonished scientists as they found the skeleton of a warrior holding a stone axe with a wooden handle. Remarkably, the wooden shaft was preserved as well as the stone part. It is assumed that the individual had high status, as such finds are extremely rare. The axe was likely a symbol of power rather than a practical tool, as evidenced by the lack of wear typical for axes used as everyday objects. Traces of yew or juniper leaves were also found, providing more information about how burials were conducted at that time. In 1947, a young shepherd boy accidentally made one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of the modern era. In the Qumran Caves, Wadi Murabaat and Kirbet Mird, near the northwestern shore of the Dead Sea, a collection of ancient manuscripts, mostly written in Hebrew, was found. These scrolls, made of leather, papyrus, and copper, have been instrumental in the study of the Jewish Bible and the history of the Middle East. In total, researchers had to examine 11 caves in the vicinity of Hel Hellenistic period settlements at Kirbet Qumran, eventually compiling a collection of 981 manuscripts. Among other finds, bronze coins over 2,000 years old hold special value. Thanks to the preserved scrolls, historians learned more about the period between the 4th century BCE and 135 CE. Additionally, scientists gained insight into the formation of the Hebrew language and the emergence of the first Bible, dated no later than 70 CE. The Qumran manuscripts also shed light on the early development of Christianity and Judaism, revealing relationships and disagreements between the religions. With each day, such discoveries become more frequent, allowing us to piece together human history like a puzzle. Who knows? Perhaps in the near future we might find something that could overturn our understanding of the past and life millennia ago.
In 2015, a traveler in Norway during a stop near the village of Haukeli in Telemark County accidentally discovered a well-preserved sword. Olsen, enjoying a walk in the mountains, could hardly have imagined that he would stumble upon an unexpected find, the likelihood of discovering which is close to zero. The man managed to find a Viking sword, about 1,200 years old. The sword, 77 centimeters long, is in excellent condition, only slightly rusted due to being in the cold and under the snow for several centuries. This find is truly amazing amazing, as such blades are usually found in tombs, but presumably its owner was in a hurry and simply dropped the weapon, which lay immobile in the mountains for over a thousand years. The sword has no handle, but even without it, archaeologists who examined it were able to determine that the relic was made around 750-800 AD, a period marking the beginning of the Viking expansion. The snow, cold, and low humidity preserved the sword, allowing for its study. Archaeologists are interested in this area and will continue continue to explore the region, hoping to find several more unique finds from the Viking era. Vikings, a contradictory people of poets and warriors, builders and destroyers, predominantly lived in Scandinavian regions, such as Norway, Denmark and Sweden. These seafaring warriors instilled fear in their enemies, and for several centuries conducted raids, colonizing European territory. Paul Cézanne, a French painter and a representative of post-Impressionism, along with Vincent van Gogh, are two globally renowned artists. Recent accidental discoveries have intrigued art enthusiasts worldwide during a routine examination of still life with bread and eggs. From 1865, a representative of an art museum discovered an incredible self-portrait. A similar discovery was made by staff at the National Gallery of Scotland, who spent decades before uncovering a hidden self-portrait of the legendary Vincent van Gogh beneath his painting, Head of a Peasant Woman from 1885. It seems that even after death, these artists continue to intrigue us with their works. Hal Safliani Hippogeum is the world's oldest underground temple. It predates Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids of Giza, having been created by people over 6,000 years ago. This underground structure served as the final resting place for 7,000 people and consists of 34 chambers carved out of limestone. The interior is adorned with red ochre, spirals, and intricate patterns created by a long-gone civilization. This magnificent find might have remained unknown to humanity if not for workers who accidentally discovered it in Malta. In 1902, local builders were laying sewage systems in the town of Paola and unexpectedly fell into one of the halls of this ancient structure. Some scientists believe that this place was used for ceremonial purposes and possibly allowed communication with gods or supernatural forces. What makes the temple unique is its acoustics, as it houses the so-called Oracle Room. In this chamber, a spoken word resonates throughout the entire underground complex. Scientists conducted a series of studies to understand the acoustic effect and attempted to recreate it, delving into ancient acoustic techniques used by the builders of that time. Currently, access to the temple is limited, and tourists must book in advance to visit this historical site. These measures are aimed not only at preserving the fragile archaeological object, but also at enhancing the visitor's experience. Another astonishing discovery made thanks to Google Maps occurred in 2008. Vincenzo de Michele, a former curator of the Natural History Museum in Milan, while studying the natural features of Egyptian deserts, discovered a round impact crater. This accidental observation led to the identification of one of the best preserved meteorite impact sites. Camille Crater was formed by the fall of a rare metallic meteorite, traveling at a speed of 3.5 kilometers per s. The cosmic object weighed between 5 to 10 tons, and its width was just under 1.5 meters. Upon impact, the meteorite appeared as a fireball with a trail, leaving behind a crater 3 meters deep and 45 meters in diameter. Remarkably, this crater remained untouched and invisible for thousands of years, preserving its original state. Discovering over 5,000 fragments, scientists calculated that the meteorite fell to Earth more than 2,000 years ago. The discovery of the crater not only revealed a unique site, but also provided scientists with more information about meteorite impacts and risks to our planet.
An unexpected discovery occurred near a small town close to Parma, not by the efforts of archaeologists or historians, but thanks to a local resident exploring his area. While examining satellite images, a programmer noticed something unusual. Near his home, he found an oval-shaped area over 550 meters long, with distinctive rectangular shadows. Intrigued by these anomalies, the programmer contacted the National Archaeological Museum of Parma to conduct research. Initially, the site was associated with the Bronze Age, but further examination led archaeologists to revise their opinion. Investigating the oval area, they found ceramic and stone fragments that were part of a Roman villa built shortly before the birth of Christ. This discovery transformed a simple anomaly in a satellite image into a unique archaeological find, telling us about ancient Rome. Situated amidst the Italian landscape and becoming a distinctive pattern on the map, the ancient Roman villa was recognized as an important archaeological find, shedding light on the history of our ancestors. The next discovery is probably one of the most random and unimaginable on our list. Imagine looking at Google Maps, perhaps to view the surroundings of your city from a bird's eye view or to explore a remote corner of the planet, dreaming of visiting there on vacation. This is exactly how an unusual discovery was made by archaeologists. Using Google's service, they discovered a giant fish trap off the coast of Wales about a thousand years old. Notably, the images were published by the company back in December 2006, but it was only now that this unusual Usual find was identified. The cone-shaped trap, over 300 meters long, was found during a thorough study of satellite images of the underwater relief. This indicates that in the past, people relied not only on fishing rods or nets, but created more complex and effective structures. Using ingenuity and manpower, people created an artificial trap out of stone and boulders left from the last glacial period. Recent dives near the find have revealed similar underwater structures designed for fishing. These may be the first traps made by humans humans, as the inhabitants of the British Isles know a thing or two about fishing. A thousand years ago, these traps allowed catching fish, but over hundreds of years, the boulders have turned into a natural reef, attracting various marine inhabitants, including tube worms and red algae. During construction work in the heart of Rome, under one of the city's oldest streets, an amazing discovery was made. City workers laying water pipes in the Appio Latino Quarter discovered a well-preserved terracotta statue of a dog, dated to the period between the 1st century BC and the 1st century AD. It turned out that the find was part of a larger archaeological treasure trove, including three tombs and an intact burial urn. The small statue, palm-sized, depicts a pointy-eared dog with a collar featuring an emblem and an object clutched between its paws. The breed of the dog remains uncertain, but its features suggest that during the heyday of the Roman Empire, people devoted time to selective breeding of dogs, with key qualities being friendliness, hunting ability, and guarding their owner. Interestingly, in ancient Rome, terracotta statues had a functional purpose and were used as part of the drainage system. The dog is made of similar clay material, but does not have carved holes for water drainage, meaning it was created as a decorative item or a gift. This statue not only serves as a vivid reminder of the ancient friendship between humans and animals, but also confirms the love for dogs since time immemorial. The presence of dogs in ancient Roman culture was of great significance. Over two millennia, dog breeds have dramatically changed, as ancestors of Irish wolfhounds and greyhounds were popular at that time. Of particular attention among the inhabitants of ancient Rome was the large Molossian hound, originally imported from Greece. This breed of dog is now considered extinct and served as an ancestor for the modern Mastiff. The Notre Dame Cathedral in the center of France's capital is a historic edifice whose construction began in 1163 during the reign of King Louis VII. The building was completed only in 1345, and it took builders another six years to finish the enclosure isolating the liturgical choir where the canons sat. After that, apart from minor modifications, the cathedral remained untouched until the 18th century. Since then, it has undergone several reconstructions, but in April 2019, a fire nearly destroyed this greatest Parisian structure. Despite the tragedy's scale, the fire was not the most significant event, yielding to the discovery of an astonishing find. During repair works, workers stumbled upon a 19th-century underground heating system. 
Here, amidst brick structures, they discovered two ancient sarcophagi hidden from people all this time. The first contained a high priest who passed away in 1710 at the age of 83. More intriguing was the lead sarcophagus, inside which lay the body of an unknown man, deceased between the ages of 25, 40. The remains suggest that this individual was a horseman, and the burial location indicates his aristocratic origin. Remnants of leaves and flowers in the coffin, possibly once a wreath, symbolized a crown on the deceased's head. Experts believe that the man had serious illnesses and could have died from chronic rhinitis or tuberculosis. Both bodies found in the cathedral were placed in lead coffins, which was the norm for members of the elite. Visual differences between the finds suggest that the men had different statuses and lived in different times. It is assumed that the second coffin dates back to the 14th century and lay under the floor for more than 800 years. Near the sarcophagus, tombstones, a pair of carved hands, and a bust of a bearded man were found, indicating that he belonged to a high-ranking official operating in France in the 1300s. Near the frosty Fairbanks, Alaska, a relic of the Ice Age, unnoticed until 1979, was discovered. During routine mining, an Italian family of four stumbled upon this amazing discovery. At one point, water sprayed from a high-pressure hose eroded part of the soil, exposing part of a beast's carcass covered with a layer of vivianite, a mineral formed due to the chemical reaction of phosphorus from the animal's tissues with iron in the soil. As soon as the body was exposed to oxygen, it turned bright blue, earning its name. It turned out to be the corpse of an ancient steppe bison that ended up in Alaska. Archaeologists who examined the find immediately recognized its significant historical value, suggesting contacting specialists from the University of Alaska. Experts reported that the bison had been in Ice Age soil, and its age could be tens of thousands of years. Further study and radiocarbon dating of the skin sample revealed the bison calf to be about 36,000 years old. Clues on the bison's carcass, including bite marks and claws of the American lion from the Ice Age, presumably provided a tragic end for the calf. Even more astonishing in the case of Blue Babe is that researchers prepared a stew from the bison meat to conduct a tasting. Despite its age, the meat was found to be quite tasty and fragrant, albeit a bit tough. In the quiet depths off the coast of Sudan lies the Bolivian cargo ship SS Jassim, which sank in 2003. What makes this ship special? It was discovered by chance, unexpectedly appearing in Google Maps images, revealing itself as one of the largest ships found using this service. The image shows SS Jassim lying on its side, as if frozen in time. Launched in 1961, the cargo ship met its end on the evening of December 1, 2003. Twenty years have passed, but experts still do not know exactly how it happened. Today, it lies at the Wingate Reef, known for numerous shipwrecks and popular among divers. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.